Okay. Um, this is my next set of talks. Um, and um, this is about optimizing suspend resume. As you can expect, suspend resume, you know, I've been looking at suspend resume again in the context of power, um, and it affects, you know, like a watch or a phone quite a bit. It's way more sensitive on a watch. I've been looking at it for a while to see what all is inefficient about suspend resume, and is there any places where you can improve suspend resume. So just to give a really quick intro, one slide. This is how the suspend uh, resume states are kind of broken down. Right before you enter suspend, you do sync the file systems, you feed the processes. You do device prepare, suspend, suspend late, no RQ, and then you power off the CPUs. When you come up, it's the reverse. You power on, resume no RQ, resume early, resume DPM complete, and then you do thaw process. That's a high level overview of the suspend resume. Um, so in terms of optimizing suspend resume, man, these fonts are really hard to read even for me right here. Um, Optimizing suspend resume, uh, file system, uh, sync file system, you know, what it does is it basically flushes all the dirty pages to disk. And it's quite wasteful on systems where you frequently enter suspend resume. So on a phone or a watch, a lot of suspend resumes per day, hundreds to thousands, it's quite wasteful to sync your file system every time. And on devices with large amount of memory, so if it's an 8GB device, if you say 10% is the watermark of dirty pages you want to have, that translates to 800 MB, and if it's a random I.O., uh, it can end up at 30 megabytes per second. So just your syncing file system can end up taking 25 seconds, right? Um, so one thing, one of the problems here is that when you're doing file system sync, there's no way to abort suspend. So if the user starts interacting with their device and you want to bring abort the suspend and do something, the device is just frozen for some time. So first question is, um, the obviously easy thing is turn off sync on suspend, but then people are worried about data uh, loss. So one question is should we try to build more intelligence into it, say instead of every suspend, do it every suspend within one hour apart or whatever, is that something you wanna do? And actually even more important than that, should we have, is there a way or should we add a way to abort the file system sync or at least not block on it? It can continue syncing if it wants, but be good to be able to abort the suspend. Um, so, okay, so I don't think you can abort the sync. But I mean, the, uh, or maybe a, the Depends other on how you, wait, you have right? to, right. you, you have to wait for it. Um, you can, you may choose not to do it at all, but when it starts, you need to wait for it to complete and then continue because then, you are going to suspend devices and including possibly the ones involved in the sync. <laughs> so it's like. But if somebody wants to abort, you don't need to, you don't need to get as far as suspend. Just let the sync continue, but return the right because you're yeah, blocking so you, on you, the right. You, you can abort. And Peter C seems to have a. You, you can abort the suspend after the sync, but then. Twenty-five seconds of not responding to the user seems really bad. It also is so okay. So the sync in a kernel is not really needed in the sense that you need user space to trigger the system suspend anyway. So why don't you sync in user space and then... then That's kind of what we're trying to do right now, but if this is possible. But it also means we have to sync every time because we don't know if it's going to be a 25 second file system sync. Yeah, so one solution is, is handing the sync off to a thread and just waiting for that and the cancel condition and then you can drop out. That's what out. I'm thinking, yeah. Um, that should be doable, it should, shouldn't be too hard. Um, as to how often you can, you can lower the threshold of dirty pages, and that way you, you don't build up. You're causing more rights and you're damaging your flash. I mean, you're gonna flush them out anyway at some point, right? I mean, you want to not have many dirty pages. I mean, I have, this is this. We're talking about phones and and watches, right? How long are they awake for? Depends on the user, honestly. <laughs> Genuinely, right? Phone, yeah. Watch is less so, but definitely for a phone. I mean, you can somebody's on their TikTok session for an hour. Who knows, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's not. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. 
But I mean, if you're open to doing the file system sync on a separate thread and just letting it continue on aborting the suspend, I think that would be nice to do, I think, if you're yeah, okay on yeah, that. Yeah, so, you know, abort, abort, you, you did, so there is a way to, uh, uh, to abort system suspend from user space anyway, like to blo block it, like, but when you start, I think that that? this happens before the sync, but you, you can reverse the ordering in there, like abort when the... Okay, but if you're open, we can figure out the implementation later, but if you're okay with the idea of doing that, then we can work on it. Yeah, okay. We have we a lot more slides this. to complain like, about. I, I, you know, I know, I know this is a problem, yes. Okay, I'll move on to the next one. Okay. I didn't quite exactly understand what you wanted to do with the K-thread thing, but if if you intend to move on with a suspend th sequence. Um, no, no, I'm not trying to move on with suspend sequence. When I'm saying when you're trying to abort, so let's say you kicked off a suspend, you're syncing a file system, you can take 25 seconds before, but I want to be able to abort it. Okay. So meaning let the sync continue or stop the syncing or whatever, but no, I'm not trying to suspend before the sync is done. Right, right. Yes, okay. that'll be done. Yes. <laughs> That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> um, so, so. Going on to uh, suspend enter, this is something I don't know. Glad to see Peter Z is here. Um, this is what I see in the Perforto trace. It's tracing. There's like a bunch of time where it looks like almost nothing so going on. Or is, it, is all of that time spent setting the flag for all the threads? And even if that's the case, why is there some sleeping time in between? This thing feels weird. I plan to dig into it further, but if anybody has insights on what might be going on here. Peter? Is this the freeze process? Free, freezer. The freezer. Yeah. <laughs> like why aren't we using more CPUs to do the freeze? I don't know what's going on, but just in general, the picture looks inefficient. Um, so I have no idea, to be honest. So um, it's been a while since I wrote that. Um, I think it just iterates all the threads and try to move it to the frozen state. And that shouldn't take long. But yeah, it's I all relatively long, but the weird part is it's clearly doing some work in the beginning where it seems to be they're doing the f whatever, and then there's like some sleep in between. I don't like, for example, the sleep here. Well, well like, I don't know what else is going on. So, so it, it is so maybe the threads that are running have been doing something, and then they need to say so they they have entered the kernel, and I need to. Exit the kernel. In it shows order to kernel states everything, right? Like if the, in that part right here, nothing is literally running on any of the CPUs. So maybe IRQs is not displayed here. That's the only thing that could be happening. But even that seems kind of sketchy. I'll just do a bunch of rants. We can come back to it if we have time. Yeah. These okay. are one of the issues I saw was wrong. Okay. So yeah, again, that we need no, to talk about. If it's a kernel thread that's, say, blocked on a mutex and that is not freezable, then we'll need to wait for that task to finish his blocking on whatever state that is. But, like, nobody else is, like, unblocking, right? Nobody else is running, so it can't even yeah, be so somebody freeing. So you need to figure out a... who's waiting for what, but the freezer cannot always continue. You need to wait for <laughs> Yeah, so for you... No, I understand, but like, I assume in those so cases something this... else is running. Like literally nothing is happening in any of the CPUs. Sarafana, is this uh, kernel, kernel thread fr freezing or is this uh, user space freezing? The whole freeze process. All of this. So for kernel threads, it's the problematic part is they freeze voluntarily and I only freeze when they want to. Okay. So maybe it's like a timer thing they're checking periodically? Okay. I do whatever. They, they have to like reach the point at which they, they, they want to freeze. And then you need to wait for this to yeah, happen. Yeah, I need how much time so, I have left based uh, on the alcohol. Still, I don't know, 10 minutes. Okay, I'll assume you have uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, middle, okay. middle of the... Okay. So. Um, the other part is looking at uh, optimizing DPM resume all the stages. Right, so what is, how, this is on again a Pixel 6 running uh, really close to the mainline kernel. Um, so without any optimization, uh, resume takes 82 milliseconds. Um, and, but you see most of the CPUs are mostly idle, like it's, uh, they're not doing that much. So what happens if you go, say, enable asynchronous suspend resume for all the devices? Good news, it actually works, fully asynchronous. Every single device is asynchronous suspend resume. 
because firmware doubling keeps track of the dependencies, it actually works very reliably. Um, and it's actually, uh, the funny part here is for Assume, it gets 20, second, 20 milliseconds worse if you enable asynchronous suspend Assume. Um, uh, I have some guesses on what it could be. I'll show the suspend part of it and then we kind of get to it. Um, and then what about suspend? It looks fairly idle again, not much going on over the entire time because it's all serialized. 126 milliseconds is how long it takes. If you enable asynchronous suspend resume, you see more parallelization, and it's again stable. It comes from 100 and, what, 126 to 94, so 32 milliseconds better. Ironically, the way you do asynchronous suspend resume is different for resume versus suspend. Uh, resume tries to do it more efficiently, <laughs> or more smartly, more parallelly, but it actually makes things worse. Um, so why is it not helping much? Uh, my guess here is that there's a lot of uh, devices. Um, uh -huh. So there is a difference in <laughs> between su uh, so the suspend and resume async handling. So and that's what I said. Like they do it differently. I know that they do they do it differently. So the the resume part uh, starts all the async threads up front. Correct. It's the trying suspend, to be more parallel, right? The Make it faster. Part doesn't do this. Yes. So that's the difference. That's a different bird. Like. You, the resume is trying to be more parallelized, but it actually makes things worse. Well, yeah, right? OK. Right? <laughs> Turns out. Right? So uh, Suspend doesn't actually do that. Um, so the, my lot of devices have really small operations, so they don't have much work to do. But they're kicking off a new care worker. We're queuing work. There's a lot of context switches, a lot of wait for completions. So there's a lot of overhead every time you do asynchronous uh, kick off an asynchronous uh, work. So that's basically why we imagine you see so much overhead. Um, and then another thing, one other thing I'm noticing is like, you know, all of these stages are still synchronous. So you need to finish DPM prepare for every device. Oh, actually, no, before that, do you know why DPM prepare and complete need to be fully serialized? Is that a reason to? Uh, DPM prepare, yes. D DPM complete, probably not. Okay. So the reason is that the PM prepare has to uh, prevent children from being added to the device, and then it has to go one by one in a, in order. With full with proper dependency dependency tracking, or is that yeah, 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 proper dependency tracking, yeah, because it has to. No, no, I'm saying with with device links, is uh, that still an that, issue? That doesn't help a lot because uh, you then could. Uh, so, so it's like we, we, we again we need to talk about this, but the the mm, problem is that you if you don't go in order, then you would m end up with some new devices showing up and being added to the DPM list in the right in the wrong places basically, and uh, it, it possibly can be solved, but I'm not sure if it's okay. worth it because that's a very uh, so in the, in the prepare phase, you are not supposed to be anything like two devices. So okay. it should be very uh, fast anyway. Um, not really. I mean, okay. like, subjectively, not really fast. Okay. I mean, like, I'm so sure it's, it's the, the operations are quick, but when you have like 300, 500 devices, it's getting worse. Yeah. So, but but complete could be done in parallel in okay. principle. Then the other part is that we also do all the phases. We have hard boundaries between all of these stages. The question is, okay, if all the devices sitting on I2C have finished whatever stage, can we move to the next stage as long as everybody in the dependency chain have already finished that stage? That's something I would like to explore. Yeah, so that it is like conceivable, but, but it would require a redesign of the whole. Very what? Redesign of the whole. Okay, so uh, I'll system. try to make it as like a command line flag. If you enable that, then we'll. <laughs> no, but the, it is designed this way. Like if we want to, the, the stages to, so, so we would need to remove the stages basically, is what I'm saying. To okay. Totally. If it and works, then, you're not opposed to it. And right? I do, do it separately for, for every device, like the, uh, <clears throat> So yeah, but it's it possible. But then again, you know, it would require some some work. Okay. So, to do it. Um, I'll try to look into that part. But there's definitely like a huge gap there where we can try to parallelize more if you want to. 
Uh, in terms of avoiding overheads, one thing we notice is basically figure out the really slow devices. So Vasan, this will answer your question. So if you figure out the really slow devices, go set them all async, and then you need to take those devices and all their suppliers and suppliers of suppliers, you need to go set them all as async. Same thing you need to do for the consumer direction, take that device, their consumer and consumers of consumers. That's the only way you can make sure those devices run as early as possible during suspend resume. Uh, if you did that, it does get better. I don't have the graph here, but it gets better than not doing any async. And it's also better than full async. So, so a, a sledgehammer approach to this might be to reduce the number of, of worker threads involved. Kind of getting to the next one. So the second proposal, right? So that I could do the first proposal I gave, but the problem is that it's still not as parallel as it could be, and it still has some of these overheads. Um, so what I'm proposing is what I call breadth first suspend resume. So if you're, if you're thinking about, say, suspend, you go suspend all the leaf nodes in parallel. And once they're done, they just queue up their uh, parent or supplier if they don't have, like, if they're ready to go into suspend. Basically, you don't queue anything that you think might end up blocking. So, and then as you finish, so basically you're walking up the tree and you just kind of set them up. That hopefully that will mean we won't have that many context switches or that many threads running at the same time. Halfway through, like, or 25% through this patch, didn't get time to finish it before this LPC. But that's something, does that sound reasonable to try? Okay, and that I'm making it on like a flag, like do everything asynchronously because not every every device is going to work that way. Um, uh, oh, the other part, on a watch, we actually measured it fairly recently. Five percent of the battery over a day is spent just running the suspend ratio. Um, so and huge part of the suspend resume time is the DPM suspend resume stages. And you're doing that for so many devices. So one thing that will definitely help is if more people start doing runtime PM, so you don't unnecessarily, if the watch is waking up to do some background thing without updating a display, why are you waking up your display device, right? Clearly this runtime PM where lazy sus early suspend and lazy resume would help, but I don't see runtime PM being implemented as much. I don't know if the interfaces are difficult to understand or why not, but I think general comment is as a community, I think we have more room to make it easier for people to use it. Um, and one other op thing is I'm thinking, can you have like a flag where if you implement suspend ops, you're gonna assume it'll work for us runtime PM and use it. Uh, we, we need to talk about this too. So I, this is in my list of things to do, but for a long time uh, now. So I would like to, for devices that are runtime suspended and can, it doesn't do not need to be woken up to stay there uh, in suspend over system suspend resume, uh, that can be done in some cases. But then strange things take like appear. Like we tried to do this for it for uh, <laughs> the Intel graphics driver uh, i915 depends audio depends on it. It, it turns out that audio depends on it. And in order for audio to, for, to suspend the audio, you need to wake up this device. And okay. So um, that, that, that's a long-standing known problem. Okay, so but can we maybe, should you try playing with the flag, says if you set the flag, then you're going to take a suspend ops so and so you're going to assume the it'll flags, work as runtime PM? The, the flags are there, and then... No, no, they, what you're talking about is early resume and early suspend, late resume. That's there, I know what you're talking about. My point is more of, people aren't even implementing the runtime PM ops. Uh, so can yeah. we do something to make somebody there as a comment? Okay. I'm trying to like make that more likely to happen. What can we do? Doesn't that already exist in the other direction? If it does in the other direction, I'm saying. If you do it in the other run, direction. If you run time PM ops and do PM uh, force suspend and force resume, does, is that what you, does what you want? There is a problem with force suspend and force resume that they cannot be used for all the kinds of devices for technical reasons. Uh, they can only be used for certain types of devices and the, and you know the problem is we need to do something to um consolidate all of that all of that i'm saying can we like call dpm prepare suspend late whatever all those ops together and say this is going to be a runtime if you have those ops 
<laughs> is that a flag that is likely to work? No, I'm not saying it worked for everybody. No, no, no. So you cannot use runtime PM. Well, so the you could use runtime PMOs for system suspend, but not the other way around. That is generally not working. Um, okay. Is it uh, worth so, trying, or are you saying it definitely won't work? Uh, no. So they. Uh, not for everybody again, based on a runtime flag. Runtime PM is the, the structure of runtime PM is just different. And then if you have those stages in the suspend in the, in the, in the, in the system suspend uh, handling, then they they are not present in runtime PM. So okay. there is no 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 like direct mapping f okay. f f to the other callbacks, like from there. I mean, if yeah, maybe we can so, talk about this in a box or something. We, we but we really like to. Starting to run over, so. Okay, last can slide. Wrap, wrap up, yeah. Last slide is uh, S2 idle was. We tried to get S2 idle working. It always ends up being some firmware bug, and nobody updates the firmware. I'm so. I would love to see this work, but I'm so tired of like hoping for it to work and never working. So, one of the proposals, which is kind of a nice segue to old stock, is can we use slash abuse hot plug implementations to fake in a really deep idle state? And can we kind of have like a wrapper around the hot plug API so that devices that don't have S2I implementations can still get most of the benefits of S2I? Uh, I'm sure we'll have, we'll have a lot more thoughts on this, so I'll pass it on to Right. Thank you. All right, thanks a lot.